David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I've got a really interesting discussion today, and it doesn't just involve Bond, but it it does involve somebody in the style and fashion industry that I know if you don't know the name, you're going to know the name very well by the end of this. I'd like to welcome to the show John Shanahan from The Cavalier. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Huge, huge Bond experience fan going way back. Ah, uh, you're 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 crazy. Then it's going to be a mutual appreciation day because I'm yeah. a huge fan of the Cavalier. Now, for those that are horribly uninitiated, we've got to before we get into any Bond things or or your your overall journey, we've got to talk about this entity. And I do call it an entity because, you know, I have so many people on this show that are really Bond aficionados or they're within the Bond community. You are truly, and I I, I say this without hesitation a style influencer. And I know people shudder at that, but from a content creation standpoint, I mean, my gosh, you are, you know, over 106,000 unique subscribers on YouTube. You're over 10,000 on Instagram. You've got, you know, several podcasts and we're going to be talking about this later. You've got business ventures as well. So you, you are an, an empire to reckon with, but how did the Cavalier begin? Where did this all start? Well, now I'm now I'm blushing, but uh, it's really came out of me wanting to shop for brands that were nicer than mall brands, but not finding uh, resources, especially in video, for nicer brands. Like at the time, it was really Bonobos and Everlane were the ones that I wanted to buy, but I couldn't find good information on. And so I was like, I have a camera, I can make videos. I'll just start making videos that I would want to watch because I also couldn't find that. I couldn't find like the videos I wanted to watch. And then from there, it just became, you know, I started out with a thesis that guys wouldn't want to watch videos that were straightforward reviews, uh, unbiased and just, you know, solid information uh, and just kept going from there. And I've I've tweaked some of that over the, the years, but like the original premise stays the same. It's like I want to make these roundups where uh, guys can if they want to buy a great loafer, here's all the great loafers you can buy. Here's what to look for uh, in making smarter purchase decisions. Was this a part of something that really sprung out of your desire. I mean, you know, when you first started out, you you probably weren't the icon that you are now. You were, you know, like many men, probably tripping your way through, you know, what is what is the fit? You know, what what do I buy? What do I not buy? I mean, was it did it start from your needs? Absolutely. There's a picture from when I went to see Skyfall with my friends in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I made them wear my like suit jackets and look I had a couple of suit jackets at the time from like H and M and fast fashion brands. And I look at it now and it's like the fit was, it was just, everything was bad about it. But the concept was, you know, have a suit on and dress really well. And there's actually pictures when I was, it was when I first really got into Bond when I was around 10 and I was wearing like a jacket that I bought from a thrift store that was really huge. And so it was like, I always had that nugget in there, but then over the years, it's just been refining, you know, continuously to get better. Got it. It's, it's, it's interesting for me because very, I find that very few people, uh, a lot of people go to your videos. Very few people do go to somebody's about page, um, whether it's your web page or your YouTube about. But if you do go to John's about, there's something very interesting in there. And it's the explanation of why the name, the Cavalier, which is German for gentleman. Where did the name come from? I wanted something that was unique. And the that word, from what from my understanding, is it's not a currently used word. It's kind of like a defunct German word for for Cavalier. So I wanted a way to get gentlemen in there, but not be overtly, uh, not have it be gentlemen in some way. And so uh, I found that word, I fell in love with it. And that's, a, that's one of the things that has just stuck through the entire time. And I never feel the need to change. I also never wanted it to be about me, myself, kind of like the Bond experience isn't David Zaritsky's journey into Bond. It's, you know, the Bond experience. It's about everybody that can be in there. And I've always wanted to have more uh, body types, gender, and you know, skin colors uh, associated with that name, and not just be about myself. Being a, being a marketing guy, one thing uh, when I first started to get to know your channel was I thought there was a great, maybe it was totally by accident, play on the words cavalier, which obviously gentlemen, but also cavalier is relaxed, you know, mm -hmm. and it's it's a bit nonchalant, and I, I find that your content itself is very relaxed. There's a lot of content out there in especially men's style and men's fashion. It's a bit snooty. Um, and, and I even find that I skate the rails very closely of, you know, how do you not come off as obnoxious? But talk to me about your process. You know, when you get a product in or you want to talk about something, where does the creati creativity ebb from? 
it's really it starts with like what do i what am i looking for what do i want to buy and then over time it's been more and more what is my audience asking for and so i get a ton of inbound questions and dms from guys that are like what about this brand uh what about this product and so that's really you know driven a lot of my stuff over the past couple of years because at this point I have everything I could ever want as far as clothing goes. And so it's really then digging into each category and understanding what guys are looking for right now. And the white, you know, white sneakers is a great example of that. It's like, I found what I thought were the perfect white sneakers. I kept getting asked about all these brands. And so I, then it's just digging in and understand, trying to help explain, uh, you know, this is what you're looking for. This is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the style that you're going for, how to style it. And so it's really been a little bit of, you know, what I want, but now it's largely driven by my audience because now people are paying attention. I was talking to a mutual friend the other day, and um, we called you a Sherpa. We actually said you're you're like a guide. You know, this men's style could be this horrible craggly mountain that any moment you could fall down a cliff and make a horrible mistake. Um, there are a few people out there that you trust, and I think that you're you're definitely one of them. But there had to be a moment, and and this is where I need you to kind of uh, slough off humbleness just for a moment. We'll we'll have you come back to it. But there had to be a moment where suddenly your channel went from a guy that just wanted to create content and do his own interest to suddenly, oh my gosh, like, you know, people are sending me products and, you know, I, I'm a quote unquote marketing influencer. And you know what? I'm turning this into a job. What was there? A, was there a light switch move? What happened? I always started off that I wanted to get to a place where that was possible, but I never really set a time frame on it. There was a point in, I think, 2017 where I was like, all right, I think if I like hunker down and do this right, then, uh, you know, I could, I could quit my day job. And then I did in 2018. So it did, definitely took a lot of planning. And it's it's always fed my my whole thing has always been the 10 years to be an overnight success. And it's like I'm on year five of that now. So uh, I still got some time to go. So you actually have done it in half the time. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, still, I don't think I'm still there. Still got uh, ways to go. But no, I think there was definitely a, a point a couple of years after I started it where I started to get more and more questions on a daily basis. And then I started getting, there's like a few NF, NHL players and NFL players that started mm. to message me directly. And I was like, oh, okay, more than just some guys are paying attention to this. Like there's there's a much wider audience for this sort of thing. And so, um, you know, that's it's just been a very slow progression over the years. There was never like a, a hockey stick moment. That's interesting. I always, you asked me this on your, uh, on your buttoned up podcast, you asked me some really great questions about um, what's that point when you're recognized. And the one thing that people should know about John, you can't tell from, from this interview, but you're eight and a half feet tall, right? You're very tall. Is it nine just feet? Slightly under, just slightly under that. Yeah. Six, four. I mean, even if I run into somebody else who's six, four, it's so rare that I feel short. If somebody else is <laughs> even just six, four, I feel like, oh man, I, I like get a complex about it. And so, but it's also been weird because I grew so fast that I still feel like I'm, you know, under six foot. And so it's still kind of jarring for me sometimes when I see pictures of myself. There, there was a method behind me saying that six, four, oh, I said eight feet, but um, because you are statuesque, I mean, there's no way to get around it. Plus you're very identifiable from your videos. Do you get recognized on the street? I, I would imagine that happens. Happens in New York. New York is definitely like where a lot of those guys are. It's happened in a couple of airports, but um, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm I'm very micro, right? I'm very niche. You're you're insane, and but there's the humbleness. I knew it would come back eventually. Yeah. Um. So so you become uh you know this this marketing influence. What happens with your relationship to brands? Because I would imagine if you're like me in the beginning, you know, you're a purchaser and you're loyal to some brands, but then there's got to be brands that reach out to you. Was that uncomfortable? Were you were you waiting for brands to reach out to you? What is, what is that like? No, I always wanted to have some level of product coming in because especially for the first year and a half or two years, I was just reviewing the products I was buying anyway. Like I needed to buy a nice suit for work. I needed to buy nicer shirts. I needed to buy shoes. And so I was always buying this stuff anyway. And the premise was just, I'll just do videos on those. And then I, I definitely, especially from the beginning, I wanted to have that conscious effort of being unbiased and not sponsored or anything. So when brands would reach out for sponsorships, like to this date, I think I've done maybe five on my entire channel. And that's in contrast to channels, it'll do five in a week. And so my thing has remained always to be independent of the brands. If I get product, letting them know, if you send it, I might not review it, it's, but at whatever you send, I can say whatever I want about it. And there's a lot of brands that have 
turned away from that and have then said, okay, we're not going to send you anything. And then I'll buy the product and review it myself and give it the fairest review that I can. And so I, that's been, been like my North star on this thing. The entire time is I do want to work with brands in some sort of capacity if they want to sponsor a video, but it'll be, uh, you know, a lookbook type of video or something where it's not re- based on a review. And then I can say, you know, and I think um, Brian Zakawa just did a really good job about this is he had Indochino, they had sponsored a post on his Instagram feed. And then he did a review on Indochino suits on his YouTube page and just said, look, I don't think they're great suits. They're too cheap and, and that sort of thing. And uh, that's always been my goal from the beginning. I think, I think it's part of your brand is authenticity. You know, people yeah. know that they can be, you know, there are some individuals out there that are beacon of truth and that's so important. All right. You knew this was going to happen. We've, we've, we've got to move on to bond because you know, the way I found your channel and, and your discussions was bond. And what I loved about your discussions with bond is they're not often the typical bond discussions. I mean, you've got, you know, discussions about James Bond and, and how do you lose a tie? like James Bond and still look good and still look buttoned up or, or can you do that? And what are some of the mistakes, God forbid, that James Bond has made and how do you avoid those? So talk to me about your Bond influence. Well, those three videos on my channel are Matt Spazer. I mean, I went, I, I had read Bond suits uh, even, even back before, you know, but before Bond experience was a thing. And, um, uh, and it was when I was trying to get more into the details, right? I wanted to understand the fit better. I wanted to understand the materials better. And Matt is an incredible resource for that. And so I emailed him and I was like, hey, I love making videos. I love your content. Can I, can we use that together to then make videos? And so that was a huge thing for me. That was, that was almost like two and a half years ago at this point. And I was like, look, I have all the Bond movies. I can edit them into a video based on your blog post. Uh, and that's how those three videos came out. They were a ton of work. And then uh, I got copyright strikes on a lot of those. And so it was like the, I, I couldn't keep the the train rolling on that one, but uh, yeah, and, and but as far as Bond goes for me, it's like I'm a I'm a kid of the '90s. Pierce was always my my Bond. I definitely had you know the memories of the Thanksgiving Christmas time uh, marathons that Spike TV would run, and so that was always a thing for me. But you know, Pierce was my my Bond. Connery, of course, you know, my dad loved Goldfinger and and the Moore era and that sort of thing. And so coming at it from the place of I want to understand style, but not be you know, there's, there's always Bond influence in anybody who talks about style. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then taking that and making it very approachable in a similar way that you do, uh, whether it's you want to recreate the looks, but you can't spend as much money on a Tom Ford suit, or if you want to get a watch that uh, looks kind of like the the Seamaster, but you can only get an SKX, it's like that's that's how I've kind of approached it. Yeah, I like that because I think it's an important discussion to have that you could be definitely two, three degrees of separation from the brands that Bond engages with because obviously they're in, in many cases, they're an incredible investment and everybody should be able to get the look of Bond, which, which often actually gravitates back to the fit. And you talk a lot about that, you know, getting the right fit, getting the right look, uh, making it a part of your personality, making sure that it connects to your personality. So, you know, what... There's got to be individuals or maybe you in your own head that say to you, you know, don't use a character like Bond or don't use Marlon Brando as a pattern. Be yourself. But what do you say to those people? What goes through your head with that? I think the way that anybody finds themselves is to use a little bit of inspiration and then find out what works for you and what doesn't. And that's been my thing, too. Like, I I definitely you can veer too far in one direction, right? You can recreate the outfits in a perfect way and and that's fine. But I think the way that you find out what works for you is experimentation. And part of that is using these kind of inspirations. Yeah, I agree with that. It's funny. The other day I was talking to somebody who had brought that up. They're, they're a content creator as well. And they said that they're getting a lot of flack because they're talking about James Bond style. And people are saying, you know, be your own personality. But everybody, no matter what you're wearing, you've seen that aspect or you've seen that item or that look or that fit on somebody else you're just not owning up to it or you haven't come to the realization like many people probably um yeah. all right question for you and let put, put me aside you, you were very very uh, nice up front in saying that but who do you follow who who do you consume oh well, it's definitely matt spazer i mean his his blog posts have been huge for that uh, James Bond lifestyle. I mean, that was another one where I started off very early digging into this world and understanding like, all right, I want those Crockett and Jones boots. Let me see what they look like uh, outside of the film. And then can I find something that's very similar to that? 
Um, and there's a, there's a lot of discussions on Reddit that I end up following. Like what I find really interesting are the other guys that are going through this at the same time. And then they're using those resources. Uh, even like someone like Harris, who can you and Harris will go in and tag, you know, each of the brands and that sort of thing. But I also like being, you know, part of the wave of guys that are also, you know, in this together. And that's what I think is so great about the Bond community as a whole. I agree. I agree. It's such a... Um... It's such a well-aligned community. I mean, uh, we we always say this kind of hashtag be kind. I mean, just everybody seems to be so giving and, and so kind and so generous with each other, which we love. Uh, all right. So you've, you're doing this as a living. Give us just a small taste of what's, you know, because this is fascinating to me. What's a day in the life of somebody that does this for a living? Uh, well, I've just been able to get a little bit more structured around it because, you know, I quit my my thought was I'm going to, so I was doing this before and I was shooting all my videos between like five and seven in the morning. I go to work, work all day. And then like on the weekends I would edit stuff and I was like squeezing it in whatever I could. And I also have three kids. And so it was like dad, uh, work, and then trying to build the channel. And my thought was, I'm going to quit this job. I'm going to like watch a bond movie every week or so play a few of the video games that I have stacked up here and never get to play. None of that panned out. I didn't end up having any extra time. For this stuff but the channels continue to grow and like i definitely can't complain there and so you know every day that i get up i'm usually between 5 30 and 6 and then i come straight out and i start my day i'll like make my tea and and get stuff done and then um i'm also doing intermittent fasting for the past few weeks here as i've been oh. in a cut phase and so i only eat between 12 and 8 but in the mornings i'll you know work as much as i can get everything done set up my day for success i usually start a workout around 11 o'clock I'll have lunch at noon and then, uh, you know, I'm right, basically right back out to work in the afternoon and I'm usually shooting in the afternoon. If I have any sort of videos, I usually shoot in that like one, two, three o'clock time frame, And then, uh, I'm basically off every day at five. I shut down, give my wife, uh, she gets a reprieve from the kids. And then uh, it's basically dad time from five to eight, eight o'clock things shut down for everybody. And then I kind of wind down and I'm usually asleep by like nine, nine, nine thirty. That's reasonable. Actually, that's a that's not a bad day. I mean, that sounds actually pretty enticing. And I meant to ask you this before too. Uh, it's going to sound extremely one dimensional, but because you're doing fashion and style, a part of what you look like, who you are, is a part of your brand. So I would imagine that diet and exercise is also a part of, you know, hey, if if emulation influence, if if what you're doing needs to be credible and, and add confidence, how much of that kind of weighs on you? And oh crap, I've I've got to work out and let me put down that Krispy Kreme donut. I don't do it as much for anybody else, but it's for myself. Like I I have a whole video where I ended up running a half a marathon in a performance suit. Uh, because I was trying to raise a little bit of awareness around health and wellness because I lost my dad when he was 47, I was 23 or something. And Ooh. I had spent Sorry. 10 years trying to get him to lose some weight. And he had, you know, con he had all these health problems, diabetes and high blood pressure, heart, heart disease and everything. And um, so I do it for longevity for myself. And then the, it's, it's similar to the, the interview you just did with Daniel Craig Strainer is like, it's about the health and wellness and the the side benefit is that you get to look good because yeah. like the number one style hack is to have a great physique and to, and to look really good, but it comes down to, you know, putting yourself first on that sort of thing. And so, uh, you know, I got serious about it about a year and a half ago. I had always been a runner. I was a swimmer in, in high school. I had always been a runner. And anytime I traveled, I would try and make sure I ran in every city that I went to just to keep up, you know, because it becomes very easy to become complacent when you're traveling a lot like that. So a year and a half ago, I got really serious. I got a trainer, started doing strength training, weightlifting. I cut out the cardio. Uh, and now that I'm working at home a lot more, I got a kettlebell that uh, I just I tagged you in this morning because I, I, I love <laughs> – that's why I love the Bond 25 Fitness Challenge. Is, it is the same thing where it's like you can do this to look like Bond, and that's a great end goal. But really, as long as you're moving, you know, whatever inspiration you need to get out, get moving, and, and to live and feel better, then, then that's perfect. Yeah, I thought that, and good point about Simon Watterson, you know, Daniel Craig's trainer, because the one point he kept driving home, I think he said it like five or six times, was that they never go after a particular look. They go after a particular physicality, and the look is the side effect, is the result of it, which I think we can all kind of gravitate to. I mean, I think that's a much better way of thinking about it as opposed to looking in the mirror and going, I suck, 
you know, it's like, no, 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 let me, let me keep going. And one day, lo and behold, I, wow, I look pretty good for my age. Um, yeah. But you're young. And it's, you're... And same thing. Like, even as, even as you're aging though, it's like, you don't want to get winded just walking up a flight of stairs. I want to be able to pick up my son who's gaining, you know, 10 pounds every few months and everything. It's like, <laughs> for me, it's that functional part of it. And then, yeah, it's cool to, to look good too and make sure you're close fit. Yeah. You've got three kids, so you've got plenty of exercise. I, you got those oh, yeah. short twitch movements going on. I know that. Oh yeah. John, something happened with you. And this isn't a Barbara Walters moment. I, I, I want to talk about this because I'm genuinely curious about this. I love these type of stories. But you've always come across to me as, as certainly somebody disciplined. We just talked about that. Certainly somebody capable. You've, you've grown a brand and a channel and a vocation around this. But you took it to the next step. And you started to really become industrious and entrepreneurial with products. Tell us about the products. Tell us about what started that whole you know, itch of doing products. Oh yeah. So Strix is, the, it's really the first men's cosmetics company that's trying to make products that are for everyday guys. And, you know, actually in part of the design brief is we wanted to have something that would look like James Bond would carry this. That's our concealer tool. And that really started because I had known uh, the guys that started that company um, for several years and they came to me and they said, we need somebody that can make cool videos and really drive the brand and really build it from there. And so I joined as a co-founder and the first two products is a concealer tool and tinted moisturizer. And it is all about this, putting your best foot forward, looking your best, feeling your best, performing your best all around there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not like Daniel Craig has never worn any makeup. He wears makeup all the time. And so part of it is just understanding that this is a normal thing that a lot of guys do and helping to normalize the use of that because, it's like every guy has their story, whether they woke up on their wedding day with a pimple, like my co-founder did, or you had a first date and you had some sort of blemish or a big meeting, you need to cover that up. And that's what we're really trying to make products for is for guys to, to fix those situations. I thought it was a great idea. First of all, a couple of things. Um, you have Peter Brooker from Taylor's with Love, who does the funniest uh, voiceover commercials. I mean, they're absolutely hysterical, filled with swear words and discussions and, and reality of, of how he uses this. Um, I wound up buying the product based on him talking about it on one of his podcasts. But the other thing that I really like about it is the story of, you know, something that a lot of men don't want to admit that, you know, one day they had a, an important pitch or business meeting or like you said, uh, an event in their lives and they borrowed their girlfriend's or their wife's concealer or somebody was putting a little powder. Or what, something happened. And this is about kind of lowering the shields of embarrassment and, and kind of evolving ourselves forward. But I, I read or maybe I even watched you had um, you had some amazing how-to video. So it's not just here, buy this product. It's here, here's how to get the most of that. Did you find that a lot of people were requesting that? No, it's, that's just more, it's another thing. It's like, for me, it's, if I came across this product, I probably wouldn't have bought it because I wouldn't know how to use it or fit it into my routine, or I would think it would take a lot of effort. And so just being able to show that, you know, this thing takes a few seconds to apply and get the results and you can't see it on your face. It's, it's very imperceptible. And that's the way that it was designed to be. Uh, for me, it's just, that's like, I just, I think in terms of YouTube videos now after doing this for five years. And so uh, that was just a natural extension. I love that. I love that. Now, and, I, and I get to experiment and have a lot of fun on TikTok where I'm very active on TikTok with it. And we've had, uh, we've had like 5 million organic views on TikTok since oh I started my gosh. farting around on TikTok. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, you're, 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 you're definitely the guru with that then. I'll, I'll let you have that. Now, the, speaking of experimenting, there is another product that I heard and, and saw you talking about. Is there something that's brewing, so to speak? Oh, we launched our third product on Kickstarter, which is like a gel cleanser like yeah. a face wash because the guys that were using our concealer were getting it on their pillows because it's, it's meant to stay on your face all day, but it can be tough to get off at the end of the day. And most guys don't have a face wash that will take it off. And so we made a gel cleanser that can remove it, but also it has organic aloe juice and vitamin B. So it like really helps repair the skin at the end of the night. And so it, everything we do is kind of walking that line between skincare and also a little bit of cosmetic element to it, which is just a category that guys have never had many options for. All right. Well, in 24 minutes, we've, we've taken quite a journey, you know, something to concept, to an amazing brand, to talking about products, using your, your, your constant love of what you do. So, so the big question I'm coming to right now is what now, what's, what are your plans for the future? I would love some time to play. So I, 
I, I loved your series that you did on the James Bond video games because that is my collector's thing, right? I don't, I have one of the Omega watches. I have a few other things, but my thing is I have every James Bond video game that's ever been made. And GoldenEye for me was a seminal game, as I think anybody as the, that spent some time as a young person in the 90s. Uh, but I never really get to play them or really dive into them the way that I would want to. So I'd love some time to play that one. But, you know, expanding the product line for Strix is going to be huge. We have a lot of stuff in the pipeline that we're working on there. And then, I mean, No Time to Die was supposed to be out, I guess, what, like next week at this point. But, uh, you know, getting to go through that experience and, and having that come up in the fall here is going to be really exciting. And so for me, what's next is just keep making videos. You know, I've I have so many categories of clothes that I want to tackle in the roundup style that that can take me several years. And then uh, I did go to Italy in September and shot at one of the oldest family woolen mills in the world, Balkley. And uh, those videos are going to be coming out soon. And just like what an incredible story. The families owned the, the mill for 150 years, something, you know, it's 1886 it was founded. And so doing more stuff like that, I want to get more behind the scenes. Uh, and that's always been where I've wanted to like take the channel. It's a show, you know, I did that with Alan Edmonds. I said, you know, here's the entire factory. Here's how the company started and all that stuff. And so that's what's really exciting to me. So expanding the Strix product line and also kind of diving into the behind the scenes of, of the clothing world that we live in, because I think it's, it's going to be extremely changed after this whole uh, this virus outbreak. I, I absolutely agree. And if we're lucky enough to be able to do some of the live events that we talked about around No Time to Die, I would love to have you attend at, at a minimum some of the New York City brand events associated with James Bond and No Time to Die. We had we had quite a, a lineup had had been planned and unfortunately uh, sidelined. So hopefully those will be reinvigorated, if you will. Yeah, I know. And, and so the plan right now, so I'm in Pittsburgh. The plan is to be based in Brooklyn. It was to be based in May. Uh, we'll see how that timeline works out. So, but definitely in the summer, we're we're looking to be out in Brooklyn by then. Oh, that's that's just a train ride into the city, then. That's perfect. Oh yeah. All right. Last thing that we're gonna do. It's not even a question. It's well, it was a little bit of a question, but it's gonna flex your creative muscles. And you had no preparation for this because I didn't even tell you about this. But what I'd like to do is is this. I want to set up a um, a fantasy scenario. You get to spend one afternoon. Could be at a bar could be at a restaurant, doesn't matter, your choice, with one fashion or brand owner of your choice. You can ask them any question, you can talk to them about the industry, you can pick their, their brain, you could even pitch an idea to them. But it's your choice. Which fashion brand, which individual do you choose to spend the afternoon with? The main, I would want somebody that comes from a heritage brand and my mind first goes to Crockett and Jones. Um, mm. It would either be like Crockett and Jones or Alden, some somebody who is of a of a company that has been around for a very long time that has experience and has really like just just been a venerable brand for a long time. I would say my first one was Bottoli. I spent the, I spent a couple of days with them. They were great. I would say Crockett and Jones because uh, I would I would be just be fascinated to understand you know, even more of the heritage and some of the behind the scenes stories that you don't really get to hear when you're, you know, reading the website and that sort of thing. And then, I mean, a Cavalier shoe would be pretty sweet. Some kind of like Chuck <laughs> boot that yes. would be in there. So yeah, I would do Crockett and Jones. That's, that's the one brand. I know Harris has like an entire collection of those. I don't have any pairs of Crockett and Jones, but they're on my short list for, uh, for the next brand here. They, I will say that they are my favorite brand of shoe for sure. And right. it's not just the bond connection. When I got my first one back in 2012, my first pair, it was a just a downward slope from there of just being hopelessly connected and addicted. And it's the feel. It's yeah. I mean, they look beautiful. I love the background. Like to your point, I love the heritage story and what they do. I love what they stand for. And they're good people to boot. But excuse the pun. They just feel great. You put them on. There's no break in. It's a slipper right from the beginning. It's amazing. Yeah, and I have a pair of Carminas, which are in the same kind of tier of quality. So I definitely mm. like once you get up there, then you understand why these things, you know, cost what they do, because there's a lot of craft and expertise that goes into them. Uh, and so, yeah, the Crock and Dones, you know, whatever, if they're, I don't know what the shoe situation is in No Time to Die, but uh, maybe- It's Crock and Jones. Well, I know it's Crock and Jones. I don't know what the uh, style is, right? I want, uh, maybe there's a, a new boot that I can grab. I'll send you some pictures. Okay. All I'll right. show you what they are. They're amazing. I've largely avoided spoilers. That's why I appreciate when you ah. post and you say there's going to be spoilers. I've largely, like, I haven't watched the trailers. I'm like, I'm, I'm very deep in the dark. I did that with I did that with any of the movies I want to see, like Star Wars. I never right. watch the trailers, James Bond. I'm on that side of things. 
Well, I will tell you, I think it'll avoid spoilers from a plot standpoint, but we are reviewing all of the footwear from No Time to Die, uh, okay. which will include, obviously, Crockett and Jones. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely give you a heads up on that one. Got it. Well, I appreciate that. Absolutely. John, listen, thank you so much, my friend, for taking the time today. I feel like I've gotten to know you better. I think they've gotten to know you a little bit better, but thank you again for your time. Of course. Whenever we can meet in person, we should do some sort of like Twitch stream bond game thing, because I've, I've always wanted to do something like that. So, yeah, Don, post, post COVID. As soon as they let me out of my house, you, you'll see. <laughs> I'll be right at yeah. your doorstep. <laughs> John good. from the Cavalier, thank you so much. This has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience, and we'll speak to you real soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information, plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you, just because we know you. Talk to you soon.